Your Steve Jones Show podcast will start shortly. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Brewers Outlet, your beverage supermarket on Reagan Street in Sunbury. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Hey there, Steve Jones Show. We're heading into the weekend, big football weekend, WKOK. Sean Carey here. Steve in a second will be in the Sunbury Motors studio. Sunbury Motors, Ford, Lincoln, Hyundai, North 4th Street, Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors. Kia on the strip, routes 11 and 15 in Hummelsworth. Our Friday show always brought to you by Brewers Outlet, the beverage supermarket, Reagan Street, Sunbury. You got Bucknell Homecoming, Penn State Homecoming, Shikolemi Homecoming tomorrow night here on WKOK and on the Valley between the Braves and Lewisburg. So stock up on your sodas, your drinks, your snacks, your roast, fresh roasted peanuts, pickle bar, and the Brewski specials too through Tuesday. Old Milwaukee 30 packs, fourteen ninety five. Yingling Golden Pilsner, 12 packs just nine forty three. And now at Brewers Outlet, select six packs are for sale too. The Superstock Superstore is Brewers Outlet on Reagan Street in Sunbury. So we're with you live till 5 here on WKOK. We have scheduled to join us later this hour. Nate Bauer from BlueWhiteIllustrated.com will get a preview of Penn State-Purdue tomorrow at Beaver Stadium. 12 noon kick. We'll have our network tailgate show up and running in the morning at 1030 with Steve and Jack, Roger, <laughs> and Matt, too, here on WKOK and so streaming talking, at WKOK.com. So, so I'm talking with Bob Taylor, who's our engineer. The He gets it done behind the scenes. Awesome work. Uh, I, I think the world of Bob. Yeah. I think the world of him. I kid him all the time, but I kid him all the time because I think the world of him. All right? So you can kid people, I think, that you can you openly then tell everybody, hey, look, you know, the, the dude is really top-notch. Yeah, there right? have been some times I've needed a highlight clip here and there, and bang, without hesitation, I get a reply that's, from him. It's like, it's like he's waiting for my messages every time I reach out to him. That's Bob. That's the guy. Bob will give you the shirt off his back. All right? And by the way, Jack and I sh- completely shamed him into going to the Iowa trip. So, <laughs> Bob, Bob had a vacation plan for North Carolina. Oh, right. This is now. This is before he got the job. Right. Remember, he didn't. You know, he didn't have the job when he put the, the vacation plan together. See, I could have sworn the only person that got the shaming in the in the bunch there was the mole man, was Ron Moeller. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> not not when it comes. Not when it comes to the dynamic duo. <laughs> okay? When it comes to the dynamic duo. Equal opportunity. <laughs> oh. And, w- and and when we double team you, <laughs> it is merciless. <laughs> it's like Friday night SmackDown on Fox. By the way, what time is SmackDown on Fox tonight? I didn't hear what start time they, uh, during the football game last night. Did they mention a start time for SmackDown tonight? I'm sure they did, but I know I didn't pay attention. <laughs> Just being sarcastic. Anyway. <laughs> I know I didn't pay attention. Well, anyway, Mr. Taylor's alleged right. vacation. Okay. So by the time we were done, Bob was driving out to Iowa. <laughs> it was going to be their days ahead of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought we were a team. I thought we were going <laughs> to you know, I thought we were going to keep the whole group together. I didn't know we could pick and choose our games. <laughs> we were we, Jack and I were Thursday, last Thursday night, I freely admit we were bad. <laughs> <laughs> because, okay, for one thing, let's start with this. Hey, you think I'm probably pretty good with the little needle here and there. Okay, right? I am not in Jack's category with <laughs> the ability to, like, get the little needle in there. And I'll tell you who was, the, I'll tell you who was the best ever at the needle. Right, to give that little needle, that little, right? Yeah. Sometimes a little in the back, a little twist. Okay. 
Joe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, Joe could needle you. Oh, he could needle you. Oh, jeez. Right. That was always funny. He was needling somebody else. <laughs> but if he didn't, but I'll say this: if Joe did, Joe didn't needle you, right? He only needled people like that. He felt really, really, you know, that he really liked, like Bud Tallman, you know, some of the players, you know. So <laughs> he's. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he, he can believe me. He could kneel you. Take my word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or he'd give you a nickname. He'd call me Stace. Every once in a while, it was Steve. Or they'd go, hey, Stefan. Because <laughs> he, he knew my parents spelled my name with a P-H. Stefan. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But and we got Nate Bauer on the show today. We have... Ross Tucker on the show today. Yeah. We have the 7 and 0 King on the show today. Yeah, we got to do something about that. 7 and 0. Yeah. 7 and 0. How about that? Well, let's see here. The uh, uh The game tonight is UCF and Cincinnati. That's tonight's that's tonight's uh, college football game. Now, around here, the big game around here tonight is Harrisburg's playing. Okay, uh, is Harrisburg State College? Little Lions are still undefeated, correct? Yes, they are. Okay. Meanwhile, have they straightened out this Shikolimi Southern Columbia thing yet? Well, uh, now they want to try to go back to doing the switcheroo again, where we could have. We could have a Shikolemi Holy Redeemer game next weekend and a Southern versus Wyoming matchup next weekend. So uh, we may find out sometime on Monday. It'd be nice to find out on Monday. Yeah, <laughs> pretty bad. It'd be four days' notice for the coaches and teams to prepare. But um, we hopefully we'll find out on Monday if uh, if there's going to be another switch or if we're going to go back to the original plan, which would be Holy Redeemer going up against Wyoming area and Shikolemi taking on Southern. It's getting confusing, more confusing by the day. I don't understand why it's even remotely confusing. I know. <laughs> Just do it. Yeah. Every everybody's in agreement as to what to do. That I mean when everybody's in agreement, shouldn't the decision be easy? <laughs> right? Well, it's just the powers that be that can make this decision. It's just they're just not thinking about all the other logistics that are in play here. Because if Shikolemi is going to play Holy Redeemer, the game is not going to be played at Shikolemi Stadium. It's going to be at a, at a at a stadium where equal distance between both teams. Well, then it's not just going to drive the bus to a point and say, I think we'll play here. It's not going to be an open field. They've already decided where they're going to play. Just let them do what they want. For goodness sakes, it's better off for everybody. Ah, just have some common sense. Here. It's just the big damper going into the Shikolemi homecoming game this weekend, and it's a big matchup, and it's a chance for you know, Shikolemi to uh, hang with Lewisburg. Lewisburg is going to be without one of their top you know, players in Max Moyers tomorrow night. You know, Shikolemi can give, I think they can give Lewisburg an even closer contest than people may have first thought going into the game tomorrow. So it's a big matchup for both teams. Big cro- and, yeah. and it's not a, uh, and it's not a crossover game. It, it's an actual true Heartland Conference uh, uh, divisional matchup since Lewisburg is in the same division with Shikolemi this year. Right. So that's the other confusing thing. <laughs> You know, one team's in Triple A, the other team's in Quad A, but in the Heartland Athletic Conference, they're in the same division this year. It's confusing. Oh, you need a roadmap to, or an app to keep track. It's high school football, for goodness sakes. I know. Okay. Just let the kids play and have some fun. Okay. Right. Maybe the adults need to just step by and just let the kids play. Okay. Mm, seriously. After after a while, we're in charge. Well, from who are you trying to convince? Me or you? 
<laughs> I'm in charge. Who are you trying to convince, me or you? See, that's what my always been my argument with the suit. Every time he tells us he's in charge, I'm always asking him who he's trying to convince. <laughs> I already made up my mind. Yeah. <laughs> well, you did in 2012. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they said, how long? It's about 12 minutes into the show. Uh, so. <laughs> so we'll have to wait till tomorrow night for Shikolemi Lewisburg, but everybody else will be playing tonight. we got Seals yeah. Grove Shimokin uh, on Eagle 107 yeah. starting at 6. Uh, Mifflinburg Very Loyal good. Sock. Good. Wellsboro is coming down to take on Milton tonight. Ooh, does Doug know? Oh, that's Doug from Wellsboro. Yeah, well, that's true. I don't know. May, yeah, maybe, see, he'll, maybe he'll... See, I miss we talking heard, to... We haven't heard from Dougie in a while. I miss talking with Doug. I do, too. God, I, lo- I really like talking with Doug. It's like talking to Tony and Shimokin. Like, I like talking to you know, you know, Dick and Milton. Love talking with these people. Oh, yeah. I have a good time. So Brian, C- yeah, everybody. Yep. Central Columbia, South Williamsport. Uh, Central Columbia playing really well this year. I mean, the only two teams they've had trouble with were Mount Carmel and Southern. Uh, so they're at the pit tonight in South well, Williamsport. That's, uh, that's not exactly an exclusive club. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Montgomery and Muncie, that's the battle for the old shoe tonight. Montgomery won it for the first time in 15 years last year, so they're looking to retain the old shoe tonight. That game is at Muncie. Uh, Midwest is at Nativity BVM, Newport at Line Mountain, Upper Dauphin at Juniata, Hazleton at Berwick, Mount Carmel at Hughesville, Columbia Montour Votech at Bucktail, Danville Montoursville should be a really good one tonight. Uh, Southern Columbia going to Jersey Shore, Bloomsburg at Warrior Run, and Tri Valley at Millersburg. So check in with WKOK.com. We'll keep that updated all night long tonight on the uh, high school scoreboard page. And we'll be over on Eagle 107. Once the Seals are done, we'll have game night. We'll have updates and Highlights and a whole bunch of other stuff. Well, the, uh, by the way, quick note to Ronald Acuna. It's the playoff sprint. We'll come back with more in a moment. Brought to you by Brewers Outlet here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Party time, game time, or just fun time. Doesn't matter what time it is because it's Brewers Outlet time. The Beverage Supermarket has the area's largest beer selection. Imports, microbrews, ciders, and domestics. Pick from over 100 ice-cold 12-packs and dozens of 24-ounce singles. Soda, snacks, hot sauces, fresh roasted peanuts. Make it one-stop party shopping and don't forget the pickle bar. So whatever you're celebrating or just doing it up, Brewers Outlet Reagan Street Sunbury wants to see you. And thank you for your years of patronage. Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket in Port Sebastian's microbrews. A selection of beer anywhere. Wine coolers, water, soft drink snacks. They roast their peanuts fresh and hot every day. The pickle bar led by the barrels of the dills. And for Buner, the garlic Indeed, second to none. All at Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street, and Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. And we're in the Sunbury Motors studio, Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors, Key Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Hey, go out, get yourself a new car this afternoon, go to Brewers Outlet, okay? Stock up for tomorrow and then go to the game and show off the car and have the tailgate of a lifetime because you went to Brewers Outlet. Sounds like a plan to me. Sounds like an absolute plan to me. Uh, Tampa Bay and Houston scoreless in the fourth inning. That game is being played right now. It's a day with, where there are four playoff games going on in Major League Baseball. Good one tonight, by the way. The Kershaw and Strasburg tonight. That is a very, very good game. That's a heck of a matchup there. I like it. Did have some Phillies news drop earlier today. Uh, Chris Young, pitching coach, uh, not going to be coaching next year for Philadelphia. Uh, unknown if he's going to be staying with the organization or not. That's according to sources from uh, Phillies beat writer Todd Zalecki from MLB.com. Matt Klentek staying, general manager. Sounds like Gabe Kapler will be staying as, uh, as the hours continue to go by. I would think probably the portion of the uh, the boardroom in Philadelphia is thinking, well, he didn't have a complete healthy bullpen all year. 
So maybe we just need to give him one more year and see how he'll do. Or he's still under contract, so let's just keep going. And that's the other thing. He is under contract through at least 2020. Correct. Nothing to see here. Do not look at the man behind the curtain. Okay. (laughs) Wait, I saw that movie. Uh, But that game is scoreless, by the way. Ronald Acuna, you can sprint. What a, such a marvelous talent, but he's still, what, 21? Something like that? 21 years old? That's why the veterans who have been around the block and know how every run is precious. And the problem, too, is he hit it to right field last night. Well, right field in that ballpark in SunTrust, that's a brick wall, which means it's going to have a big-time carom off of it. And Fowler played it perfectly. So, uh, you know. It's got to be momentary lapses somewhere. I mean, there. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you had Gene Segura. Thought, there was a he, hustle he, question on him earlier th- this year and Michael Franco. and Well, he thought he hit it out. I mean, because you saw how, how he acted when he hit the ball out, and the ball was way out. Well, he acted the exact same way. Well, he carried the bat two-thirds of the way down to first base on the one that stayed in the park. And you kind of go look at his face like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. When it comes to car buying, there's the other guy's way, and then there's the SMC way. The other guys force you into a vehicle you really don't want. The Subway Motors way lets you take the time you need to browse, ask questions, and take the test drive and think on it. For over 100 years, the Merth family and all their employees have made your experience the most pleasant one you'll ever have. The other guys won't offer you the best price for your trade, no matter how much they say they will. The SMC way is their promise to provide you with the most money the market shows your vehicle's worth. The SMC way is to offer you all applications applicable factory rebates on new vehicles and generous discounts. Looking for a pre-owned vehicle? The SMC Way checks each vehicle in a 200-mile radius to determine the lowest price, then beat it. It's the lowest price promise, just part of the SMC Way. The choice is up to you. The other guy's way or the SMC Way. The SMC Way wins every time. Sunbury Motors Company in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and at sunburymotors.com. Selling more cars and satisfying more customers for over 100 years. Taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Keith Moll just posted on our Facebook page. Let's go King. Oh. I mean, Sean, I mean he's I feel like that he's almost unstoppable. Man. Now. The king got another fan. It's unbelievable. Whoa. I mean, soon we'll be guests. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but you said that when you, when you created the concept of having your brother on the show, I mean, you said with glowing words, hey, he could do this show without, he any, without any hesitation at all. And, hey, he's oh. he, he brings it every single week. Yeah. Love his thoughts and comments and takes and... A little oh, humor he, along the way, too, and so, yeah. No, you could do this. Rack them up one fan at a time. We'll get to uh, Ross Tucker in a moment. Uh, our show brought to you by Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. So stock up for tailgating this weekend. Brewers Outlet specials through Tuesday include Old Milwaukee 30 packs, fourteen ninety five, Yingling Golden Pilsner 12 packs, just nine forty three. And now select six packs for uh, sale as well. How about that? Wine coolers, water, soft drink snacks. They roast their peanuts fresh and hot every day in the pickle bar, led by the barrels and the dills. Indeed, second to none. All at Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street and Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. And we're in the Sunbury Motors studio. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. And with that, we bring in uh, one of the truly outstanding guests. I always look forward to talking with him, Ross Tucker. Ross, great to have you with us. Welcome back. Great to hear you. Steve, I'm great. Uh, I've told you this before, but I hear your voice so often. It's always a pleasure to come on your show. I was uh, last Saturday. I did Cincinnati at Marshall, and Marshall 
wanted to do the meetings Friday night, the production meetings. So try to get those done by 8, hop in the car. It's in time for you guys to talk about the, uh, the Jan Johnson interception and the Sean Clifford touchdown before I could get to my hotel room and, and watch it. So you guys do an outstanding job. I even listened to you when – uh, McGloin was doing the color an- analysis <laughs> while Jack was doing something. Um, so I happen to be traveling a lot on Saturdays, so I-, I listen to you a lot. You guys do a great job. Well, you do a great job, and I appreciate the very kind words. And we'll even tell McGloin you thought he did great. We'll make sure. <laughs> yeah. I'll- I'll- we'll throw that into McGloin for you. Uh, okay, well, let's get into a couple things. You talk about some of the games you've been doing. What's the game you have this weekend? So I actually have a big game uh, for college football. I'm on my way to West Point right now. Um, Army hosts Tulane, and they're both receiving votes in the top 25. So I guess they're both top 30 programs right now or top 35. So it's kind of – they're both three and one. Army lost to Michigan in double overtime, obviously. They should have won that game. Right. And Tulane lost at Auburn. So – and that, that game was only like 24 or 14, something like that. So two pretty good teams. Um, not sure if you've ever been to Mikey Stadium oh, on a Saturday. It a, is incredible. Oh, what a setting. Isn't that looking over the Hudson River? Oh, my goodness. It is it is breathtaking. Everybody told me it was great. I'm doing all the Army home games for CBS Sports Network this year. I'm also doing Army at Air Force, Army at Hawaii. But it is it is incredible. I encourage anyone listening – Some small Saturday, get up to West Point. I know everybody wants to go to every Penn State game, but Penn State's (laughs) not always home the same time that that Army is. Make it a point to get up there. So I'm doing that, and then I'll be at the Eagles and the Jets on Sunday, and we are, of course, on Sam Darnold's spleen watch, whether or not (laughs) his his, his spleen has – yeah. His spleen has shrunk. Uh, I want to get to that in a moment. I want to ask you about Jeff Moncton, the head coach at Army. Obviously, he's done a great job with all the restrictions that Army has to put together a system that works brilliantly for them, and it's extremely well coached. How attractive a coach could he be for another program out there? I think very um, for a couple of different reasons. Number one, you know, when he was at Georgia Southern, they actually did a lot of uh, a lot of stuff out of the shotgun. Right. So they did a lot of option gun stuff. So he's shown he's not just an under, under center triple option guy. You know, he's not married to that offense, but he's had tremendous success at Georgia Southern, tremendous success at Army. I mean, Army was down for a long, long time. And now, you know, back-to-back double-digit win seasons, back-to-back commander-in-chief trophy they had never done that uh, before, either one of those things. They go to overtime at Oklahoma. They go to double overtime at Michigan. I mean, I'm not sure, Steve, that Penn State would do that at either one of those places. Right. You know? So, I, and I've always said this. If you're like Illinois or Kansas or Rutgers or one of these programs that realistically – you're never going to be in the top half of your division, your conference. I think it's worth a shot, Steve. I really do. Like, you know, Rutgers is never going to be better doing it the same way that Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, and Michigan State do it. They're just just not. I think it's worth a shot to bring in, even if you want to go with the triple option offense, I think it's worth a shot. I mean, I don't think Georgia Tech's going to do better than they did with Paul Johnson right. when they were winning eight, eight or nine games every year. Right. I mean, I, I think it's worth a shot for the programs that are never, ever good. I know you got the Eagles and the Jets coming up, and I know you're on uh, Sam Darnold's spleen watch. Uh, Adam Gaze has found religion. Uh, but when it comes to Philadelphia, what do you think that game at Green Bay did for them. They got Jeffrey back. They didn't have Jackson back. But what do you think it did for them confidence-wise? Huge. Uh, I think it was gigantic. I mean, if you lose that game and you fall to one and three, you got major, major problems. To win on the road, short week, Thursday night game against a team that was undefeated, I think the Eagles really needed that. Plus now they got a little extra time before they play the Jets. They still got some guys healing up like Deshaun Jackson. 
their secondary has been decimated yeah. by injury, which is why it's probably a good thing that they are playing the Jets this week uh, because that's been a major, major problem for them. They haven't played very well on the back end, and they've got the injuries. But the biggest takeaway I had from that game, Steve, was probably – just the offensive line. I mean, I said before the year I thought they were the best O-line in the NFL. They did not play like it the first three games. They were unbelievable against the Packers. I mean, you just don't see that. You just don't see in the NFL that kind of domination. And they've got a second tight end that, you know, unless you're a diehard Eagles fan, maybe you don't know much about him, in Dallas Goddard, who is an absolute stud. And when they go to their 12 personnel, which is one running back, two tight ends, man, it puts you in a bind because if you're in regular personnel, they'll split Zach Ertz out and Dallas Goddard, and those guys are like receivers. So they're going to get those guys matched up on your linebackers, and they're going to toast them. If you go to nickel or a sub package with an extra defensive back, they'll just run it right down your throat. I mean, it's really it's really a pick-your-poison thing that I think the Eagles are going to major in, especially with Deshaun Jackson out. I think you'll see a lot of the two tight end stuff. And he can block. I mean, you watch him when they decide to run the ball with Jordan Howard, for example. I know Miles Sanders obviously gives them that little jump to the outside. There's no question. But Jordan Howard took a bigger roll on in the Green Bay game. You watch Goddard block. Holy mackerel. I mean, he cuts in there, and he takes it out like he's a pulling guard. He is – he's a tremendous player. Like, I'm not sure he's not already one of the top tight ends in the NFL. And I don't think anybody, you know – I don't think the Eagles would give him up for anything. But if you don't have a good tight end, he would be a guy I, I would try to trade for. Do it. Uh, very quickly, but and then we'll uh, we'll let you go because we appreciate the time very much. You mentioned that you've had a chance at least to watch some of Penn State in the in – the, it's, it's a – third of the way through the regular season. What are your initial impressions of uh, where this team's going right now? Well, I had some major concerns through the first three weeks. Uh, I thought run defense was a concern, even just the defensive line overall. Um, I was a little surprised uh, uh, by Clifford's awareness. You know, I I thought he would get to things a little quicker, get the ball out quicker. You know, like when he dove two yards short of the first down against Pitt, yeah. I was very confused because talking with him, because I do the Keystone Sports Network, where we do, we do right. like an hour of Penn State football talk that's on a bunch of stations, and you can listen on a podcast or whatever. And I talked to Sean a couple times when he was in high school. He's extremely impressive, yeah. like, like very impressive. So for him to kind of be lacking the awareness in the pocket, lacking the awareness on fourth down or on third down, I, I was really surprised. Um, that was a major question mark, but it's still only his third start. And then against Maryland, that's the best half or game they've played since probably Iowa 2016. I mean, so impressed by the O-line, by Ricky Ronnie, by Clifford, and even the depth. I mean, their second-string linebackers are better than probably 95% of the country. And they shouldn't. I mean, I know Ellis Brooks played great, but Jadan Johnson plays great. And Cam Brown plays great. I mean, to lose Micah and still play that well, this is as talented as a team as they've had in a while if you're talking about depth, maybe not the high-end guys of Saquon and Gasicki and Miles and Godwin and Deshaun Hamilton, but in terms of overall depth, frankly, Steve, they look to me like a team that can do a lot of damage this year, but they look to me like a team that could be awfully, awfully good in 2020. Ross, you know it's always a pleasure talking with you, my friend. Thanks so much. Uh, You'll be great this weekend with uh, both your games. Anytime. Thanks, Steve. All right. uh, Penn State tomorrow takes on the Purdue annual homecoming game, Beaver Stadium 100th homecoming game. And uh, the uh, uh, we'll be on at 1030 tomorrow. So I asked I asked Bob Taylor this afternoon. I said, I said, what time are you guys going to the stadium tomorrow? He said, quarter after six. I said, quarter after six? I said, are you kidding me? 
He says, no, I'm not kidding. He says, I've got to go over to a Raj. And I said, well, how much time is it? T-? So I said, so I'm just asking, how much time does it take for you to set up? He says, um, we're already set up. So you're already set up? I said, you're going in a quarter after six. That's four hours and 15 minutes before airtime. They're already set up. So already set up in the box or already right. set up both in the box or over where you do the tailgate show or both? Well, they're set up in the box. They're set up in the locker room, but they do have to set up the tailgate show. Maybe it's for that. No. Oh. Bob said, Bob said, no, Bob told me, he said, it takes 20 minutes. And he has to set that. He has to set that up. If there's a local station here in State College that uses the stage and the equipment first, and then we take over. I said six fifteen. So I know that some people have complained about traffic. I said, but isn't that bad? <laughs> Now the patterns don't kick in that early, from what I. Eight thirty. Yeah, eight thirty. Yeah, yeah. If the my good friend Gary Goloshevsky, and Gary's one of the nicest guys, hardest working guys on the planet. Super G. Yep, he is awesome guy. He of course, his children don't like when I when I say this, but he is the uh, curator of the Tom McGrath tailgate. He's not even going over till 7.30. And when it comes to the loyalty litmus test, I mean, they let him go through without even having him, having him go through the metal detector. He's not even going till 7.30. Roger's going at 6.15. Bob's, Bob has to go with him. He gad. I can tell you right now, I'm out cold. <laughs> <laughs> six, I, six will, I will say this for Roger. Since he does a morning show and he's up that early anyway during the week, it's no problem for him to be there at that certain time, even though it's a Saturday. Yes, fine. It's six fifteen. Here, here's what the deal is. That's a, in my opinion, it's only, okay. That's a long time to sit in a broadcast booth doing nothing. Yeah. I mean, that's a long time to be sitting there. In other words, like you can sit there. To be honest with you, when there's nothing going on, you can sit there too long. You're like, okay, no, because there's nowhere to go. They're going to do walk to the fourth floor and go, hey, and then walk to the third floor and go, okay. And walk to the second floor, all right. All right, let's go back to the booth. (laughs) There's nothing to do. 6.15. Like I said, Gary's not going until 7.30. And he's one of the first people there. Jose Altuve, by the way, has had a two-run homer. And the Astros in the bottom of the fifth inning lead Tampa Bay 2 nothing. Verlander's given up one hit over five innings. He struck out four. He has walked two. Tyler Glasnow actually has been pitching pretty well. Former Pirate, former State College Spike. Four and a third. Gave up four hits, two runs. Now Brendan McKay's in the game. Now McKay is a great, you know the story of McKay, don't you? McKay is an incredible story. McKay was at Louisville the National Player of the Year. And he was not only a great hitter, he was a great pitcher. Well, when he was on this level in the New York Penn League, he hit the longest home run I've ever seen at Medler Field, LeBron Park. Two years ago, he hit it 449 feet over the right field grandstands. The longest home run I ever saw here. I mean, one of those no doubters, easy to call, the whole deal. He wanted, and he got. He was stipulated that he would continue to do both, hit and pitch. And this year as a pitcher, 
he ended up going two and four, 49 innings. He was on that Durham shuttle with Tampa Bay. Well, he's in the game now because Glasnow's been pulled out. They were going to start him. At one point, and decided not to. Last time I got the start today. He sure can hit, and he sure can pitch. Interesting, isn't it? And they've been letting him hit in the minors. He hasn't done anything in the majors. And Glasnow, Tyler was here at one point a few years ago here at State College. Good guy. Liked him a lot. You know, I mean, Altuve played here, too, you know, except he was playing for Tri-City. Verlander's brother played against State College when he was with the Connecticut Tigers. So, the, you know. So a lot of connections here. It's amazing how the, the connections, like you look at last night's game, Tommy Edmond, big hit, former State College Spike. Harrison Bader played really well last night, former State College Spike. The manager, Mike Schilt, a former third base coach, State College Spikes. So over time, you get a chance to connect with a lot of people here that you're now seeing in the major leagues. But what else what also helps is that you really get to pick their brains a little bit and the instructors they bring in. Now you're picking the brain of Willie McGee. Now you're picking the brain of Ryan Ludwig. You know, now you're, you know, and you keep going through the number of, of individuals they bring, bring through that you can pick their brain a little bit. Pick the brain of a Mike Schilt. Pick the brain of an Ollie Marble. You know, what, you know, you know when John Mazalik was here, the Cardinals GM, I had a long talk with John about several things. It just gives you a different perspective. And I'll tell you what the beneficiary is. The beneficiary actually is the audience. Because some of the items I talk about give me a better perspective. So when I'm talking to you, I'm dealing from the perspective of people I've talked to. Doesn't mean they're right about everything. But they know more. They know more than I do. That's what they have always assumed. When I talk to James Franklin or Pat Chambers or Joe Paterno, whatever, in my lifetime, I ask them questions I don't question them because I, I feel on their subject they know more than I do. They're experts in what they do. So it's up to me to pick their brain and find out more. You're listening to News Radio 1070 WKOK Sunbury. You can hear us anywhere in the world with the Sunbury Broadcasting Corporation app.